What's good, math family? Today, we're going to look at three examples of how to simplify fractions that have radicals in their denominator. And make sure you stick around to the last example because we're going to look at a radical that has a root that is greater than two. Let's get started. In our first example, we're going to see a binomial in the denominator that has one radical with no coefficient in front. For us to simplify, we're going to multiply by the conjugate which is basically the same exact expression, x in radical seven, but with the opposite sign. And we just have to make sure that when we multiply, we do that to both the denominator and the numerator. So when we look at the bottom of this fraction, please remember that the difference of squares applies. So in the top, when we distribute three, we're gonna have three x minus three times radical seven, and then in the bottom of the fraction, we're only going to multiply the first two terms and then the last two terms because we know the middle terms cancel out. So we're left with x squared minus radical 7 squared. Now when we simplify this one step further, our numerator is going to stay the same. But when we look at the denominator, any time we square a radical, it's just a number without the radical. So essentially, our answer is going to be 3x minus 3 times radical 7 over x squared minus 7. Now, another way that they may express this answer is they may pull out that 3 and have inside parentheses x minus radical 7, and the denominator stays the same. Even though that's x squared minus 7, and it looks like the difference of squares, Seven is not a perfect square, so we can't break that down any further. Now we're gonna to look to our second example and situation you'll see with this topic. The second example and type of problem you'll see is when we have more than one radical. And typically they'll put two radicals in the denominator, but the process stays the same. We're gonna rationalize with the conjugate. So radical five and radical two stay the same. But instead of a subtraction sign, it's now going to have an addition sign. And we're going to make sure that we apply this same step to the numerator. So when we focus more on the numerator, please remember that we're going to distribute 4 to both radical 5 and radical 2. And then we're going to go back to radical 2 and do the same thing. So yes, we are foiling. So when we simplify this one step further, in our numerator, we're going to have 4 radical 5 plus four times radical two. Then when we go to radical two and distribute, we're gonna have radical 10 plus two. Now we go down to the denominator. We know that this is the same concept as the difference of squares. So this is gonna simplify to radical, uh, not radical five, just five minus two. My bad family. So when we look at the numerator, we notice that none of the numbers under the radical are the same, nor can we break it down. No like terms, nothing. So the numerator is going to stay the same. So we rewrite it. And then now we know that this answer is all over three. And with that, we're going to go on to the last problem of this video. Our last example is a type of problem you'll see on the standardized tests like the SAT, EOC, or FSA exams. And the reason why this is challenging is because students forget that for us to simplify, we have to be able to take the fifth root of whatever is under the radical. So when I multiply, unlike a square root, I'm not just going to multiply by the same exact expression. This one, if I'm trying to take the fifth root of two, that means I'm going to have to multiply 2 to the 4th, because when we combine those two exponents, we'll get 2 to the 5th, and then we'll be able to simplify. So when we go to x squared, I'd have to multiply by x to the 3rd to be able to pull out that 5th root, and then y to the 3rd power, we're going to put y squared. Now when we go to the numerator, we're going to keep that very same expression, but I'm going to simplify two to the fourth power as 16. So we have 16x to the third 
y squared. And I'm going to show you why I did it like that. So in the numerator now, when I simplify, everything stays the same. 3x times the fifth root of 16x to the third y squared. Then in the denominator now, once we multiply what's under the radical, we could have 2 to the fifth, because we're just adding the exponents, x to the fifth, and y to the fifth. And just, just, just to make sure we're on the same page, math family, we could have put the fifth root of 32x to the fifth, y to the fifth, because the fifth root of 32 is just 2. I like to keep it like this because when we go in to divide our exponents, it's easier for us to kind of see and identify. So now at this step, when we focus back on the numerator, there's nothing we could pull out. We can't pull out the fifth root of anything that's under the radical. So it stays the same. But in the denominator, things are going to change. So let's focus on the, the one that I've initially put. So the fifth root of 2 to the fifth power, when you divide those exponents, we're just going to get 2. Same thing with the x to the fifth, y to the fifth. So now when we look at our answer, this is where we should be at the next step. However, this is not the final answer. We could simplify by dividing out the x. So after we divide that x out, the actual final answer will be 3 times the fifth root of 16x to the third y squared all over 2y. This is our final answer. We really hope that this video review was helpful for you, math family, and you found value in it. If it was, we're going to ask that you smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below if you had questions on this video or if there's videos you'd like to see on our channel in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and joining Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.